Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, we, the government, believe that access to healthcare ought to be recognized as a human right on the basis of three contentions. Before I go into the depth of the contentions that we will present, I would first like to define, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the definition of ought is used to express an obligation. Therefore, it is an obligation to recognize healthcare as a human right. <clears throat> Uh, on December 10, 1948, the United States and 47 other nations signed the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The document stated that, and I quote, everyone has the right to a standard of living adequate for the health and well-being of oneself and one's family, including medical care. <clears throat> the United States and Mexico are the only countries of the 34 members of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development that do not have universal health care. As of 2013, over half of the world's countries had a right to healthcare in the national constitutions. Although some may say that international law and decrees made by bodies such as the United Nations are irrelevant because there's no way to truly enforce these laws, the, the UN Declaration of Human Rights is a testament to this moral standard of nations in reflection of their ethical perspective. Contention one, instituting the right to healthcare could lower the cost of healthcare in a country such as the United States. According to a 2013 study conducted by the University of Illinois, under a single payer system in which all citizens are guaranteed the right to health care, total public and private health care spending could be lowered by $592 billion in 2014 and up to $1.8 trillion over the next decade due to lower administrative and prescription drug costs. Uh, according to the American Medical Association, on average, private health insurance plans spend 11.7% of premiums on administrative costs versus 6.3% spent by public health programs using the nations that have universal health care, such as Germany, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. Uh, according to a study in the American Journal of Public Health, Canada, a country that provides a universal right to health care, spends half as much per capita on health care as the United States, thus determining that there is an economic benefit for nations to take universal health care. <clears throat> Uh, a right to health care could make medical services affordable for everyone. Uh, according to one estimate of a proposed bill to implement the single-payer health care system in a country such as the United States, 95% of U.S. households would save money and every individual in the United States would receive guaranteed access to publicly financed medical care. Contention 2. A right to health care could save lives. According to a 2009 study from Harvard researchers, and I quote, a lack of health insurance is associated with as many as 44,789 deaths per year, which translates into a 40% increased death rate among the uninsured. Another study found that more than 13,000 deaths occur each year just in the 55 to 64 year old age group due to a lack of health insurance coverage that they are unable to afford. Uh, contention three, providing all citizens the right to health care is good for economic productivity. When, uh, in, a January, in a January 14, 2000 speech, uh, World Bank President Jin Yong Kim stated that all nations should provide a right to health care to foster economic growth. When people have access to health care, they live healthier lives and miss work less. A lot of this contributes to the economy in their respective nation. Uh, a March 2012 study by researchers at the universities of Colorado and Pennsylvania shows that workers with health insurance miss an average of 4.7 fewer workdays than employees without health insurance, therefore deeming that they will be able to get to their jobs more and foster more economic productivity within their state and their, and their nation. Uh, according to an Institute of Medicine report, the U.S. economy loses 65 to 130 billion dollars annually as a result of diminished work productivity due to poor health and premature deaths among the uninsured. Uh, I would like to furthermore emphasize the importance of healthcare among the population by showing another statistic that I introduced it by saying because the United States, as an example, is a very wealthy country, it should provide healthcare for all its citizens. Many European countries with universal rights to healthcare, such as Germany, France, the United Kingdom, and Italy, have a lower gross domestic product per capita than the United States, yet they provide a right to healthcare for all their citizens, therefore making it feasible for countries such as the United States and Mexico. As of 2012, 47.9 million people, or 15.4% of the United States population as an example, did not have health insurance. And according to a June 2013 study, even with the Obamacare reforms that exist in the United States, as many as 31 million people still remain uninsured in 2016. And this is just a testament to the fact that in the United States, as an example, although they have had reform in regard to the access to health care, the fact that it has not been recognized as a human right has been a detriment to the population. So in order to make the population more healthy and more and have, and better, have better access to institutions that provide good medical care, it needs to be recognized as human right. 
Uh, the United States, for example, spent $8,508 per person on healthcare in 2011, over 2.5 times the average spent by member countries of the OECD, which have had access to universal healthcare as a human right, and they spent about approximately $3,322 per person, approximately $5,000 difference, which in the long run could result in billions of dollars in lost money. Uh, with that level of spending, the United States should be able to easily provide a, health, uh, a right to healthcare to everyone. And aside from the economic, yes, would you know the U.S. has many different obligations to fill its national debt, as well as the high number of folks trying to fill its foreign interests? So yeah, Although this is true, one of the national, one of the most, prior, one of the biggest priorities of countries such as the United States and countries alike is the emphasis of the national interest of the people. The United States has an obligation to protect its people in the medical realm, to prevent them from missing their work, to prevent them from dying premature deaths, and to, and to promote the general welfare of the people, as mentioned in the United States and the Declaration of Independence. Uh, I would like to conclude by stating uh, a summary of my points. Contention one being it could, uh, instituting healthcare, a right to healthcare could lower the cost of healthcare in countries such as Mexico and the United States. Uh, contention two, a right to healthcare could save lives in the long run. And I mentioned, uh, that said over 13,000 people in the age, uh, age range of 54, uh, 55 to 64 years old died or premature deaths because of a lack of uh, health insurance coverage in contention three, providing all citizens the right to healthcare is good for economic productivity, and I listed a plethora of statistics to back this. And I'd just like to conclude everything by saying it is a moral objective of a country such as the United States to implement healthcare because it is the priority of a nation such as the United States, Mexico, and others that do not implement healthcare as a human right to promote the wealth and welfare of the people and to ensure that their people are guaranteed the rights that other people like that, to guarantee the rights that are shared around the world. Thank you. Uh, the gentleman will receive two minutes to be there.